Welcome to the Bet US Soccer Channel. God knows oh, what's going on there, producer. I'm looking and I'm seeing it's just me and Ali. Way there you go. <laughs> Welcome back, Stinch, the only man in the world who puts his clock forward two weeks. It's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable that we missed you, Stinch, two weeks ago. But first of all, this is Bundesliga Match Day 27. We're America's favourite sports book. So I'd like you to subscribe and get us closer to 20,000. We are the number one viewed or subscribed uh, channel here at BetUS TV. So let's pull away. Let's be in our rightful place and uh, enjoy because we've got so much. And if you ring the bell, you're going to miss and uh, not miss so much because we've got uh, Bundesliga, Serie A, La Liga, Premier League, Europa League, Champions League, then Copa America. And then we've got the Euro champs as well running alongside. Um, if you like your odds, your props, your offers and your bonuses, then please type in betustv.com forward slash odds. We're going to have records. We're going to have chat. Well, I say we, you're going to be involved in the chat and I'd like some predictions for the games as well and there'll be a Q&A at the end that if I think the questions are good enough I will ask my stars my stars are uh, father time uh, in Mark Stinchcombe who is a world odds compiler who sniffs out a wrong line from from absolutely miles away and at Alex Classic Tips who if you don't know Alex Classic is both teams to score and over uh, Alex uh, first of all the old international break I know you're not really a fan Yes and no. I want to stay uh, away as much as I can. You know, I got involved in some uh, games, uh, some were winners, some were uh, losing picks. But uh, overall, it was a boring international break. Uh, we've got only uh, a few um, official games, right? Uh, right now, we know all the teams qualified for the uh, Euro 2024 which is good that uh, we can start uh, uh, previewing those and uh, make some future bets on, on them. But apart from that, I'm really happy. Uh, I'm, I'm just concerned about um, some of the players from the top five leagues uh, going out in, I don't know, USA, uh, South America, uh, playing their matches there. And uh, after, after that, flying back to play their, their league games. Uh, so I really don't understand uh, some of the times. Okay, uh, we were used to have friendly games during this international break, right? Um, but uh, right now, if you have only official games, like six, ten of them, why do you have to play also the others, you know? Okay, some teams are uh, preparing for the Euro 2024. But I don't know. Try try some, some second-tier players, you know, that you usually... Uh, have them on the bench rather than use the top uh, players. Some of them even got injured, you know, de during this international break, which is bad because we are entering exactly in the final line of the of the leagues, and uh, is the most important part of the year for most of the teams. Yeah, it's the home straight, definitely. Uh, st first of all, I've got to remind you all that uh, Brazil played both their games in Europe, in London and obviously in Spain. So no worries about the Brazilian boys who play in any of the four major European leagues. But Stinch, the you know, bugbear I have is that these teams have already qualified. So I'm going to talk about England and they have players in there that they can have a look at and they don't get a look in. What's the point in taking them just to make the sandwiches? Yeah, I find it all very peculiar regarding England and the consistent um, approach from, from Southgate of playing the, the same players that maybe he already knows what he's going to get from them. And let's be honest, like Southgate is not up to the, the task anyway. So you can all you can all put a line through England at wow plus plus three hundred faves. Like you can all like he's won seven of twenty four matches against the world's top ten. That tells you everything you, you need to know. Wow. Wow. People will put people will point to the fact oh he's made a World Cup semi final. Oh he's made a Didn't play Euros anyone. final. Exactly, exactly. The path was yeah. very, very soft. Euro Euro and, final at home. Yes, yes, yes. Home advantage as well there, and you know the 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 Still bar. Lost. Um, the bar is basically how they did the World Cup. They got to the quarterfinals, ran into France, and and that was it. Um, you've got the penalty issue as well, 
Um, England obviously lack the mentality when it comes to come to penalties. And then the other thing I think might come to fruition as well this summer is the fact they've been playing all this extra time in the Premier League this season. I think some of the players might be more fatigued. So, yeah, anyone looking for a futures bet on the Euros, you can put a huge line through England and their, their favourites. Like, it's madness. Yeah. Well, they shouldn't be because the back four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll give you ten back defenders, defensive players for England. And I wouldn't play any of them. Anyway, listen, as we said at the beginning, we've got 45 minutes to do this show. And here we are. I might as well say goodbye now. And by the way, Stinch, you look like you've lost half your earphones. Uh, there we go. 2.85 units of profit. Remember, we are in the uh, we're, we're in the home turn. Here we go. Uh, so let's have a little look. Uh, Alex doing great at 11.68. Uh, come with a nice little run, Stinch. You're just like, you don't care. Uh, and, uh, Pavlos at 4.4. .4. Well, I don't know. He only turned up for a couple of weeks. Right, listen. Let's go. Let's get this first game on. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, plenty chat going on. Let's have a little look. Raymond Redden said, France team is stacked. Yep, yeah, still got to go and do it. First game is Gladbach versus Freiburg. Gladbach plus 130, Freiburg plus 195. Alex Classic looks like this game has got it stamped all over it. Over 2.75 goals is at minus 120. The draw, maybe the old Desmond at plus 265 here. Desmond being 2-2 and Gladbach to score twice at minus 107. Wouldn't like to go near the money line, to be honest, Inch. No, me neither. I think um, Gladbach, we know, have been very unpredictable this season. And I think Freiburg in, in recent weeks have been uh, as well. They gave um, Leverkusen a good game last time out, but that was on the back of having lost 5-0 to West Ham after going to London with a 1-0 with a lead from the first leg. So very, very uh, Jekyll and Hyde performances from Freiburg. Uh, uh, they drew with Bayern 2-2 not so long ago, so it's very difficult to know what you're going to get. Uh, Gladbach a bit similar. Uh, we backed them to beat Borkham uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, wasn't quite sure whether it was a bit of a risk. They won 5-2. And then when they played Cologne, who can't score, it's for real. So, yeah. Yeah, and my I, th I, th I think the rest recipe as you mentioned flash is, is to is to back goals particularly with uh, the the increase in freiburg's games in the bundesliga uh, alone of late freiburg's last nine games gone over 2.5 goals the reverse fixture here finished 3-3 and i wouldn't wouldn't be surprised to see something similar so yeah very easy bet for me here over 2.75 goals at minus 120 yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. I'd maybe push it up to around the plus one hundred of just going over three goals, uh, and not worry about the push. I think this game starts at two one, maybe even two two. Alex. Yeah, if you look a little bit um, at the history in the last eight uh, games of the season in the in the Bundesliga, ninety two percent in the last ten years uh, went over two point five goals, and uh, that's huge. Uh, uh, normally, we know that in. Bundesliga, we see plenty of goals uh, week in and week out, but uh, more now at the end of the season, uh, the fight for the uh, for the um, relegation spots uh, is still on because uh, Mainz had a week to remember. I mean, uh, it was their week, 2-0 uh, against Bochum, uh, with uh, Bochum uh, their direct, let's say, opponents for the uh, salvation spot. Uh, they, it was a six-pointer there. They won. Uh, Wolfsburg also lost. Uh, uh, Köln and Darmstadt, the last two, two spots in the standings, lost. So I think that uh, everybody will score. And even more now, after the international break, we will see plenty of games uh, with uh, at least three goals. You, I, Me personally, I will do all of them over 2.5 goals. I think it comes around plus 1,900, something like that. Uh, which which is great, maybe to put uh, McDonald's money on it. Um, but I think that, uh, like Steen said, Gladbach are unpredictable. Freiburg lately are, are unpredictable. In, unpredictable. Yes, they scored two against Leverkusen, but they have could have conceded at least five. Leverkusen missed so many opportunities of scoring. So I think that uh, uh, Freiburg were very lucky to concede just twice. Uh, I'm going with the same bet as Steen, over 2.75 goals. It's goals all around. Maybe you can do an Alex Classic here uh, at uh, same, minus 130, minus 125 there. Because I see them both scoring. Gladbach's uh, defensive line is atrocious. 
they will concede uh, 1000 percent so this is a this is a classic game this is goals all over the place yeah you've got power against a team that likes to uh, shift the ball quickly when they're at it. Uh, the big thing with Freiburg is they can score goals very, very quickly as well. They don't need a bundle of chances. And Danny Lopez says in the chat that basically you should go with Gladbach and the corner market. They're 8 and 5, whereas uh, Freiburg are 1, 1 and 11 on the road in, uh, in the corner market. So maybe you go with the, the home side. But 8 and 5, that's not really a big enough edge for me. Let's have a little look at the official picks. Over 2.75 at minus. 120 is two units for the team because Alex has duplicated uh, what Stinch has done as well. Let's move on to game number two. Some trappy old games here, to be honest. Frankfurt yep. versus Union. Frankfurt are plus 104. What Union's turning up, we don't know. Plus 296. Do both teams score? Because this is a very low total in the Bundesliga. Over 2.25 is only minus 115, which we never, ever see. We're getting to La Liga standards here. The draw, again, is a runner at plus 242. Frankfurt scored twice at plus 118, Alex. If Frankfurt scored twice, do they win the game? Frankfurt is one of the best teams uh, at home. They lost only one uh, uh, game all season long uh, in front of their fans. And uh, uh, my only concern about uh, that uh, uh, goal uh, line at 2.25, of course, you would take it because it's only 2.25. You don't see that uh, very often in, in the German league. Um, it's uh, it's Union's uh, problems in scoring on the road. They only scored nine goals all season long in 13 games on the road, uh, losing uh, uh, nine of them. Uh, I think that Frankfurt scores twice at least on their own. I think that they have the ability even to cover uh, the goal line on their own against a Union side that are desperately desperately in need for points there. Uh, okay, let's let's say that they are safe. Right, because uh, it's nine points already with eight games to go. But if they lose two, three, four games in a row, that might be problematic for them, right? So I think that uh, they will they will come here with everything to play for. So maybe they will score uh, one goal. I don't. I hate that uh, that price of uh, Union over uh, over zero point five goals at minus two or three. I think that 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 is very low. I think that if it was around minus 140, it was the correct price for Le for Union Berlin to score uh, one goal. But yeah, anyway, uh, Frankfurt at plus uh, 104, plus money there. I would take it if it is to, to, to take something from this game. I don't see uh, Union, uh, winning on the, Union Berlin winning on the road or uh, even uh, returning home with uh, one point. So it's clear for me that uh, Frankfurt, two goals, at plus 118 on their own, I think that they will score. Yeah, the big problem you've got here is not only in Berlin uh, creating chances, it's Frankfurt's defence, to be honest, because I uh, maybe I cannot remember, or more than the fingers on one hand, clean sheets that they have kept. And Union Berlin are quite strong opponents who are trying to turn a corner stinch. Yeah, I mean... I take on board uh, what Alex is saying regarding Union's firepower or maybe a bit of a lack of. But if Frankfurt's, if you're talking about the goal line of 2.25, if Frankfurt scored two themselves, your worst case scenario, you're going to lose half your stake. Like, mm. so I, I think that's that's why it's so attractive. If it was if it was the line of 2.5, you'd be like, oh, okay, I'm a little bit iffy. If, if Frankfurt scored two, and that's how it finishes, I'll lose all of my stake. But if Frankfurt can score two themselves, you're you're already halfway there. Um, and I think the, the the previous game is a perfect like example of what could happen. Frankfurt went to Union at, at the beginning of the season and won three 0 themselves. So I think Frankfurt yeah. are capable of covering covering this two point two five line themselves. I'm really really excited about uh, about this bet. As you mentioned, Flash, like you never see two point two five goal lines in Bundesliga. Okay, maybe you might see it between like Cologne and Union, for example. We're talking about Frankfurt. We've been riding the overs train on Frankfurt for weeks, and we've had to be creative. And I think it was against Hoffenheim. I think we had to back both teams score on overs to get like a backable price. Uh, we, I think we got over two point. We got two point five line when Frankfurt went to Heidenheim. But here we're getting two point two five line when Frankfurt at home. Okay, maybe if Frankfurt are away, and you think, all right. 
right, their their goal expectancy should be a bit lower. But Frankfurt at home, like, yeah, this is an absolute no-brainer for me here. I mean, the Bundesliga average, to put it in perspective this season, 3.21 goals per game. Yeah. So at a line of 2.25, if you expected there to be 3.21 goals in this game, the price for overs would be minus 220. We're getting minus 115. Like, that's a huge, huge price. Um, Question for you, Stinch, and very interested about your opinion here. Uh, the difference is 30 cents between over 2.25 at minus 115, 33 cents. Uh, and Eintracht total team over 1.5 at plus 118. We both think, and you also uh, said it, uh, that uh, you also think that Frankfurt can cover uh, the goal line on their own. So if you think that Frankfurt can score at least two goals on their own, why not to go with a team total at plus 118? I would say to take both bets, to be honest, if that's your thinking, because all the odds correlate. So if the overall match is expected to be low scoring, then automatically everybody's team totals is going to be reduced as well. So they're all, they all run off each other. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't... I don't want to back both just because I'm really happy with the main line. But, yeah, I, I would definitely, if you wanted to get the team total on side as well, I would stake, you know, maybe, I don't know, half a unit on, on the Frankfurt team total. And, I mean, I'm having two units because, for me, it's a banker because, yeah, I just think the line... I, I think the prices are fine, but the line should be, like, 2.5. So, I, I think I'm stealing a quarter of a goal. So I, And also, I know as long as we see more than one goal, I can't lose all of my stake. And that's just so, so attractive as a gambler to have that um, reserve on, on your on your side, essentially. Um, 19 of Frankfurt's last 27 games have gone over 2.5. 2.5. We're talking about a line of 2.25. Like, yeah, yeah absolutely no-brainer. Just make sure you have a line-up check as well because neither of these two squads are deep. So if they've picked up injuries, illnesses, anything else, just make sure you do. But, I, yeah, I can't get away from the Frankfurt team total and not even worry about whether Union turn up and contribute and um, and, it, and it is something crazy like a 2-2. Um, let's have a little look at the official picks. I had to leave it alone for some reason. It just, it just didn't feel right, even though it's a numbers play. Team A, Team B, 2.25, you've got to go with it. And it's only minus 115. Stinch jumped all over it. OK, if you want to see a grown man cry, then this is the game to have a little look at Leipzig versus Mainz Mainz hadn't won since March until they played Leipzig at home and ended up winning 2-0 and I was on Leipzig banker and they let me down I'm putting my hand in a dog's mouth again Leipzig at minus 260 I've got them around uh, minus 360 I'm thinking that minus 260 is one of the best parlay plays you're going to find anywhere in Europe this week and there's quite a few of them Mines are a plus 630 draw plus 435 Leipzig I think they could well score two or three uh, but it's free you're going to get paid at plus 135 meaning you could maybe go with a push around over two at around what minus 105 the under over set at three at minus 125 which then basically tells you to go with Leipzig Alex uh, uh, no, Stinch, Leipzig over two and a half at plus 135, but Leipzig at minus 1.25 is minus 130. Yeah, I'm going to sound like a bit of a, a broken record and the, the plan was not to ramble, so I'll keep it short regarding yeah. uh, Leipzig. I, I just find them very difficult to, to trust. There's, mm. there's, there's so much volatility with their performances. I think it's because they had huge player turnover and they've got a lot of young players, so you lack a bit of the consistency. Um, and yeah, you, you perfect example was that reverse fixture when Mainz surprised everybody and won two nil. No, I think it was the the new manager's first game in charge, or or maybe they it were was awful the though. They were both of them were awful to be fair. Yeah, I Leipzig, mean, oh. I mean, Mainz very very turgid team. Fourteen of their last seventeen games have been under two point five goals. So you go, okay, they're they're not too bad at keeping it tight. Yet yeah, two games ago, they lost eight one against Bayern. And Bayern weren't even that good in that match. So, yeah, really, really don't know what I'm going to get from uh, from both of these teams. As, as Alex says, uh, Mainz got a nice win last weekend, but it was only against uh, Borkum. So, you know, the template for success there is not that great. And Leipzig went to went to Cologne and won 5-1. So they're in good goal-scoring form. A few weeks ago, they went to Borkum and put four past Borkum. So, yeah, I think... Um, Rather than try and find a single here, I think if I wanted to get Leipzig on side, I'd do exactly as you said, Flash, and I'd put them in a, in a parlay. 
Yeah, that's exactly what I've done, Alex. I've put Leipzig, but minus one. So I feel as if Leipzig are definitely going to win. Um, and I've gone with, uh, uh, obviously, we'll see the second leg a little bit further down the road. I think it's like minus 165. But I see Leipzig and a North American saying, especially in their sport, is revenge spot. Yeah, we're talking about two teams with uh, two different objectives uh, here. Leipzig fighting for the Champions League spots, just one point behind Dortmund in fifth place there. And Mainz, yes, uh, great win, like Stinch said last weekend against the Bochum. Bochum really doesn't care on the road. Uh, as uh, we know, Bochum is a, a, a team that uh, mostly are taking the majority of their points at home. Uh, but it was an impressive uh, win uh, for Mainz. On the road, Mainz is the only team in the German Bundesliga with zero wins uh, this season. And uh, on the other side, uh, uh, we have RB Leipzig, a different animal at home than on the road. They scored 32 goals uh, so far at home, and they only conceded 10. Uh, they kept three clean sheets uh, in a row at home, winning, uh, uh, I think that they won 2-0, all three of them. Yes, Darmstadt. Union Berlin and uh, Gladbach. I think it's the same kind of opposition here against Mainz. I'm going for a value bet. I think that Leipzig uh, uh, will start strong and will try to to, uh, to finish them off in the first uh, half. So at plus money, I'm taking RB Leipzig half time, full time at plus 105. Yeah, they've got a few players that are actually grown really, uh, really into this season. Uh, the big thing with Leipzig is now. Just concentrate on getting into the top four. They cannot slip up. And, listen, they'll have open wounds from getting beat against uh, Mines earlier on in the season because it was probably one of their worst performances uh, home or away. So let's have a little look at the official picks. You've got to go with the home side. If they let us down again, then I may ban them for this show. Leipzig minus one, first leg of the parlay. Leipzig halftime, full time, plus 105. Come out the traps, 2 0 up at halftime. Wouldn't, go, wouldn't put anyone off of uh, Simon's or Simmons or uh, a Pender. There's got plenty players now who, uh, who are getting in the box and pulling the trigger. So, uh, yeah, good luck to us. In years gone by, this would be one of the biggest games uh, out of the four leagues. But, I mean, it's a bit of a... Uh, Bayern, minus 239. Cool, there's a parlay piece on its own. Dortmund at plus 504. The, I cannot work. I don't see five goals in this game. Over four is minus 105. Bayern to win by two is plus 100. These numbers, Alex, have gone all a bit crazy. And the draw is at plus 465. In what world Bayern Dortmund draw... Is should be at 465. For me, it should be 290. Probably. I think that they are looking at uh, the head-to-head -head record between these two teams and mostly uh, when Bayer are playing at home. Uh, nine wins in a row uh, for Bayer. Um, and uh, the previous nine games between these two teams produced at least uh, uh, four goals and eight of them went with uh, so both teams to score. I think that uh, Bayer wins this one. I wouldn't uh, back them at uh, minus 239 because it's uh, a very bad price in my opinion. Uh, but still, I think that Bayer will uh, will win this match. I I think that they are back on track, Bayer, you know, after all so many problems they had at the beginning of uh, 2024 when, they, um, when Leverkusen... Uh, 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 made this uh, great gap between them and uh, Bayer. Right now, uh, Bayer are back on track and their classicer is always great to see when Bayer are playing at home because they will they will beat Dortmund. Uh, it's not nice from a fan perspective, but uh, the reality is that uh, Bayer should really win this one. Um, that minus 1.5 on the Asian handicap at plus 100 is again too low. I would take it if it was uh, uh, at around plus 130, plus 140. But uh, that over four goals on the Asian handicap, minus 105, is a is a bet to consider. Yeah, but uh, minus 239, and I think we just saw Leipzig at like minus 260. They're back to back, no complications, money line parlay. Uh, I see Dortmund are. are 
so dodgy. Bayern are not much better, but they are like basically scoring and creating. Um, Stinch, where would you go with this game? Because I just see Bayern winning the game. So then after that, the numbers are a bit tricky because is, is this like a 2 0, 3 1 game? Yeah, I, I think this one is it's difficult to build a case for Dortmund, essentially, given, as Alex referred to, the record in this fixture. I mean, Munich have scored three or more goals in the last seven home games in this in this fixture. Like Dortmund are terrible, basically, in this fixture. And my issue with Dortmund and the Turtsics is I find in the bigger games, he will try and keep things tight and sit back. And we saw what happened in the reverse fixture when Bayern ran out 4-0 winners. So for me, it's trying to find a way to get with Bayern somehow. But as you say, like the prices aren't really attractive. I mean, the prices, as you would expect with Bayern at minus 240, in, generally in the away game, uh, Bayern are always minus sort of 110, 115 in that area. So when they have home advantage, this is naturally... The, the correct price based on that again like goal line is huge so you think oh maybe I can do like I don't know Bayern and under 4.5 and so, or something but we've just seen how how volatile Bayern have been this season and some fantastic uh, wins they've had you know 8-1 against Mainz the other, recently they put eight past Darmstadt earlier in the season obviously they won the reverse fixture 4-1 and, and as I mentioned before they regularly score three or more so my angle really to try and um, to try and find a, a value a way into this game uh, is actually uh, someone put it up in the comment is to get with Harry Kane because he has been Mr. Reliable where if Bayern have, have failed at times this season or under the whole of Tuchel's reign he's been there now about, around about a year and he's flopped in a, in a few games where they have been big favourites but Harry Kane has been Mr. Reliable so if he's fit and he starts my bet is to back Bayern to win and Harry Kane to score because it's twice the price of Bayern to win but if Bayern are to win I would be surprised if Harry Kane doesn't find himself on the score sheet. 20 goals in just 13 home games in the Bundesliga this season. Um, Seven times he scored a brace, three hat-tricks. He's averaging nearly six shots per game, which is just incredible figures. And uh, almost four of those are coming inside the box. So, you know, the likes of Musiala, Sane, Muller are doing a great job of finding him in dangerous areas. Um, Yep, so... My way of betting do- uh, betting Bayern here is to basically get Harry Kane on side. And yeah, doubling the price of Bayern to win with a Harry Kane goal, I think, and is really you, attractive. And if you also think that uh, Bayern will score three goals on their own, as they, they should normally do, I think that Harry Kane will score one of them. I mean, yeah, it's, I, I don't know how many times this year uh, since uh, he signed with Bayern, they scored at least three goals and he wasn't on the score sheet. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how Sule still gets a game, Alex. How does Sule <laughs> still get a game? He, he, he looks heavier than me. Honestly. I mean... He, he, he cannot run. He's... Um, he's lucky in a way... It's, it's all about uh, the type of the squad that Dortmund has right now. I think yeah. that we'll see a lot of changes in the summer. I think that uh, Dortmund will sign a lot of uh, new players. Hopefully, uh, they will uh, have a new coach next season because I hate this uh, uh, one with all my powers. I hate him so much. Uh, But uh, other than that, yeah, a lot of players in that Dortmund team have nothing to do on the pitch. It's amazing. It's amazing we're talking about Dortmund and not got a proper striker. I mean, all of their that. goals, and all that. their goals, all their creativity comes from wide or, or central areas. Nothing like getting on the end of something. Not a talisman. I, it's strange. I, I mean, it's crazy how uh, two players uh, from Stuttgart, uh, Gyurasi and Undav, are in the mm. top five of top scorers in Bundesliga, yeah. and the first one after that for Dortmund is full crook. And my bad, because I said at the beginning of the season that I don't see him scoring more than 10 goals. He already scored 11 goals. But after what you are saying, like they have n- no valuable player in front, like Fulkrug is the only choice right now, you know? Yeah, he's basically he's, he's an odd carrier. 
He's basically one of them. He's just like a battering ram. OK, let's have a little look at the official picks because it is Bayern Munich versus Dortmund. It will be a must watch. But again, for me, it's the second leg of my parlay. I'm going with a free hit of Bayern winning uh, minus one with obviously Leipzig minus one. It pays really well. You wait until we get to the end and the best bets. I couldn't believe the price. Bayern and, by, and by Harry the way, Kane. By the way, Flash, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you. you. You saw that breaking news? You're not news? sorry at all. You saw that breaking news in the Bundesliga with Xavi Alonso? That he is said to it? stay at he said to stay at Bayer Leverkusen with announcement to follow uh, to follow in public today. Decision made and confirmed for uh, Xavi, who's staying for one more season at least. Release clause in 2020, uh, 2025 will be active. Liverpool and Bayer are both informed of Xavi's decision. Oh yeah, but no mention of Real Madrid. Marcos? Yeah, I think you're very wise. Very wise, because he can see that Bayern and Dortmund and Leipzig and any other team you want to mention are behind them, are behind them. Uh, and obviously, yeah, a wise choice. And obviously, if anyone wants to go and buy him now, this is this is all Leverkusen's strength. If anyone wants to go and get him now, whether Liverpool, whether it be Real Madrid, whether it be Bayern, they're going to have to pay for the new contract. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Harry, but anyway, Bayern and Harry Kane, anytime goal scorer, at minus 125. Uh, let's move on. Get the banana skins out. Augsburg minus 129 at home. Are you mad? Uh, I'm not going to go anywhere near them. Kern, the mighty Kern. Desperate. They scored three goals, you know. Not like in five or six games. They actually scored three goals in one game. And they're plus 346. You can get them at plus money for double chance when they're fighting for their leg. And Augsburg are minus 129. Something's not quite right. The under over is at 2.75, which again, over 2.75 is under the Bundesliga average. That's at minus 102. The draw is at 281. Kern, just to score, is minus 201. Stinch. Augsburg minus 129. Well, no one's going to go near that at all, especially when Kern are fighting for their life. I've got Kern getting something out of this, and it's at plus money. Flash, where do you think Augsburg are in the Bundesliga table? What, in my, <laughs> in my head of what I see? No, what, the, you know what, I mean? they, what they actually are. Oh, where, where uh, you, ninth. Seven. Seventh. Seventh. I know, seventh. but what I'm... Yeah, but because they've got away with murder. You, know, incredible... you can't rely on them. What an incredible job the new manager yeah. has done since he's come in. Like He took over, I think, around uh, middle of October, and they were yeah. floundering in the bottom four. And now yeah. they're seventh. They've just won four games in a row. I don't know if that's mm. a, a record, but it has to be in the sort of last five, six, seven years. But they've for... played Mickey Mouse Rovers and Donald Duck <laughs> Athletic. How Do you know what be... I mean? They beat Freiburg, they beat Wolfsburg. Um, and Freiburg, but hang on, you've got a, bit, a couple of caveats in there. Freiburg in the middle of the Europa League run where they were playing midweek, uh, Saturday, midweek, Sunday. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and mm -hmm. they've got eyes elsewhere. Excuses, but, uh, excuses, excuses. <laughs> every yeah. time with the reasoning. Oh, oh here we go. Well, now you've rattled well, Mitch's cage as well. Mitch is like, why do you hate Augsburg so much? I exactly. just hate the minus one. Because 129. I want, I, I want a direct, I want a direct bet with you. 50 quid on me, I will go with Augsburg. And I will take... Well, and I can have Kern and the draw. To, I will leave you to take the others, right? The the, the Kern and the draw. I'm going oh. uh, 50 quid on the show. But you, I can you give, but you're giving me... You're giving me... You're, you're giving me less than I can get myself. Yeah, but I mean... Yeah, I'm giving you two chances. No, two no you're free. not. Though. Yeah, no, you're not. You're giving me even money when I can get over even money. <laughs> okay. Uh, you will pay me... Oh, well, look, let's get Stinch's view. Sorry? Okay. You will pay me 50 and I will pay you 70. Oh, 145. Um, plus 140. <laughs> okay, let's have a... You know, okay, uh, Stinch, what do you reckon? Augsburg uh, minus 129. Yeah, I think maybe a bit of a, a boring answer, but I think the the prices might might be about right. I, I completely get you. Like we're so not used to seeing Augsburg at minus money, and I think I opposed them earlier in the season at home to Bochum, said it's like the worst price ever. That was with the old manager in charge, and I think that game might have finished two two. Um, but since then, yeah, they, they've, he's, he's just been doing a, a fantastic job, and I say encapsulated with the seventh place in the league, four wins in a row. Cologne, uh, you mentioned obviously they scored three in, in one game. They actually scored three against Gladbach earlier in the season. Uh, one albeit. game! One game! 
Yeah, albeit that that reverse fixture against Gladbach. I think Gladbach had a man sent off and Cologne were given a penalty as well. But anyway, Cologne have only scored 20 goals this season. So that means 30% of their goals have come against Gladbach this season. So <laughs> I, I can't trust them. But as we know, when teams get to this stage of the season and they're desperate for points, sometimes you do see some funny results and some uh, funny score lines. And I think that's what we kind of saw uh, the other two weeks ago when they went to Gladbach. So long story short, I think Augsburg minus 129 is about right. I wouldn't be backing it. Uh, and I think I think the goal line is, is where you would expect it to be as well, given that we're not quite sure what we're going to get with Cologne. But Augsburg, we know, have been very uh, prolific. And uh, the, the striker, Demovic, has been very, very good for them this season as well. So, yeah, I, I think a bit of a boring answer, but uh, I couldn't really find a, an edge that I wanted to get involved in here. Yeah, Augsburg, if I told you, they're the only team outside of Leverkusen who have, have strung four wins in a row. But it's the minus 129. I'm not adding it. Especially when Kern have got to turn up with their Swiss Army knife and they've got to find a way, Alex. They will find a way. I'm not touching this game uh, from a betting well, you are. perspective. You are. Well, but, you are. But, <laughs> you are. But Don't again, worry about that. You are. Again, if you want, and because I'm, I'm not I'm so sure because in betting, you, you could never be sure about uh, how uh, will the uh, team will play or not? But I will give you 70, and you will give me 50. I will give you with the, I will leave you with the doubt, draw double chance, and I will take Augsburg, because uh, I I think that the the international ge- uh, break came at the wrong point for Augsburg. I think that they were uh, on a roll. I think that uh, they were producing a good football. I think that if uh, uh, Mainz, uh, uh, if Köln was coming to them just before the international break. It would be a three-one type of match, but I still think that uh, Köln, like Steen said, 30% of their goals <laughs> came against Gladbach, and this is the funniest story uh, overall for the show. 30% in 26 games were against Gladbach in two games, the worst attacking side in the league. Augsburg four wins in a row, and I think that uh, like Stin, I th- I want to see it, but I don't think that. Uh, in the last 10 years, I've seen Augsburg winning five games. But again, I will, I will go with you with uh, 50-70. And, and, and I'll uh, obviously, if uh, Augsburg do win, and I will put your 50 to charity. I'll put it in the box. I'll buy everyone here like uh, a piece of pizza or something for on behalf of you. But Perfect. through my pocket. Perfect. Okay, let's have a little look at the official pick. Kern, double chance, plus 100, even though I'm getting plus 140 <laughs> with Alex, which is always nice. That's how you do it, because now I'll just have a bit on Augsburg as well, and I've got me plus 40. <laughs> uh, OK, let's uh, let's move on to the final game. And by the way, there is some uh, breaking news here, because we've got Stuttgart at minus 368 and Heidenheim at plus 868. Now, a few weeks ago, we said about Heidenheim, are they safe? There's now a potential 15-point deduction from, uh, not from the Bundesliga, but from the Flashman when it looks at the league table. I will put them down. And you know that 15 points still leaves them outside the relegation zone. So I have to do a bit more maths. Uh, the draw is at plus 5.36. I think that's um, that's redundant, to be honest. Over 3.25 goals at minus 122. Does Stuttgart win by two clear goals, Alex? Because you've got to give up 1.75 at minus 113. Uh, I don't know about that, but I think that Raymond is uh, reading my my emails. <laughs> uh, he's going with the same bet. I think that uh, Stuttgart are too strong against this. Uh, okay, we cannot call them newcomers, uh, right? After 26 mm-hmm. games, no. New newly promoted team, right? Well, yeah, because no. they are here to stay and they are safe. They've done great. And I think that it's it's because uh, the fact that they are safe, they are not playing so good lately. I think that Stuttgart is a goal machine right now. They will uh, um, they will start with both Gurasi and Undaf up front, and there is no way that they cannot score at least three goals on their own at home. They did it many many times this season. I think that they will start as uh, we talked about uh, uh, Leverkusen earlier against Hoffenheim. I'm taking uh, Stuttgart half time, full time at minus one to five. 
Yeah, I mean, it looks like the obvious play, to be honest. Uh, Hyde and I have done absolutely brilliantly because they've just thrown caution to the wind uh, and they've had a little bit of... Uh, They've been a little bit more streetwise than uh, Darmstadt and they've got their rewards, to be honest, and they got their rewards early, Stinch. Yeah, I think uh, we've given them a lot of credit this season and deservedly so, but yeah. I definitely will be looking at them next season in the, the relegation market because um, I think with two at least two teams coming up from the second Bundesliga, it's, it's likely that those two teams would be the favourites to go down and uh, doesn't necessarily take into consideration the fact that Heidenheim, there probably isn't a lot of difference in, in actual quality-wise. So we might be able to get maybe plus 300 or plus 350, something like that, and Heidenheim to go down. So that's that's my thinking already for next season, which I think is always uh, good to have a, an opinion on a, a team that you might want to oppose and what the, be what the best way to do it is, because we're not going to get rich by backing Stuttgart at minus 3368, three, right? No. I feel like this is a bit frustrating really in a way with Stuttgart uh, they were the third worst team in the Bundesliga last season and now they're the third best team uh, yeah. but unfortunately the odds reflect that uh, I think we did all right at the beginning of the season to get them on side get Jurassic on side but now they're just unbackable prices aren't they but as Alex alluded to you don't really want to oppose them with Jurassic and Undav up front uh, goal line as well 3.25 you know it's a significant hurdle to to overcome um, I don't really like to, to back it because I don't really do enough sort of analysis on, on half-time markets. But the, the bet that Alex suggested and also uh, uh, there's been some good comments today because someone in the comments suggested it as well. Stuttgart half-time, full-time. It's actually one in seven of Stuttgart's last eight games. So you can really see that they're coming out of the traps quickly. And as you say, I think we, we might be able to label Heidenheim even with, with eight games to go as kind of being on the beach with that 10-point cushion to the, to the drop zone. So that would be uh, where I would uh, sort of throw my dart if I was to have a bet here. Yeah, listen, uh, you say they come out of the traps. They love a 45-minute goal as well. I've had Stuttgart a couple of few times, maybe minus one, maybe uh, just to be leading at half-time, and they keep going. 45 plus two, uh, I think, was the latest one I've seen, and I was absolutely jumping. You know me, I'm not an emotional better. I don't get excited because I know that I can still get beat uh, in the 45th plus fourth minute. Um, yeah, Stuttgart must be. I mean, listen, there's a, there is a parlay to be had here with Leipzig, Bayern and Stuttgart. It looks too obvious. Um the other one is that Dortmund could uh, fall out the uh, the top four uh, this week if Leipzig win. And obviously, you know that Stuttgart are six points clear of them already. Uh, let's have a little look at the official pick. There it is, Stuttgart. Half-time, full-time from Raymond Reddington. I mean, sorry, from Alex Classic Tips. Uh, minus 125. Now's the time for Q&A. Keep it short. I've got three minutes. But before that, I'd ask you to subscribe. If you like this content, then thumbs up. And also, ring the bell, which means I'll notify you. You'll never miss any content again. And on Monday, we've got an extra Premier League show because we've got a full card on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Then, the week after, it's back to the Champions League and Europa League. Cannot wait for that. Um, also, if you like your odds, your props, your offers and your bonuses, then type in betustv.com forward slash odds. Uh, John, serious question. Does anyone know when Boniface returned from injury? Not me. Alex? In uh, April, uh, the earlier. The earliest. Okay, okay April. Well, two days two time days. then. <laughs> Look at you, Stinch. I, I heard like that brain was going. Li, li, li. End, How long is that? Of, end, of, end of March, beginning of April, he okay. will. Uh, he started to to train, uh, but very light, you know. Uh, okay. So I don't see him in the next two three weeks. No, there's no rush. But, there's no rush. But, but there is no rush having what Leverkusen has at their disposal right now. Exactly. Okay, Bochum, uh, Darmstadt. Um, who cares? Stinch? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Darmstadt, we've said a, f a lot recently, they look like they're, they've given, not given up, but they just lack the quality literally to com to compete. Oh, and we see that with a lot of teams that yeah. do come up from the second Bundesliga. But that, you know, they haven't won in the last 19, I think. Uh, and obviously a lot of defeats in that period. But the price is massively reflected. Bochum are, are huge favourites here. I think they might be about minus 145, something like that. I'm just having yeah. a look here. Four defeats uh, in a row, though. Four sorry, defeats minus... in a row for Bochum. 
Yeah, exactly. So there's no way you'd want to back them at minus 158. No. So, yeah, just a massive swerve from, from me. Yep. Uh, Mitch is saying, Darm set double chance at plus 139, Alex. I mean, there's worse bets, isn't there? I just, would, just I would the, never trust yeah. Darm shot. Maybe, you know what? Stay away from this game. Just exactly. yeah, you, don't have, exactly. you don't have to bet every match. Like, no, if no. Exactly. Discipline's important. Any more? And, and for, and for oh, you, I Flash, uh, Auris is uh, asking you, can you buy me a car? <laughs> no. Why would I want to do okay. that? don't even know you, Auris. He Why just does. Kind of, I mean... Kind of car will just walk up to a stranger and ask him, can you buy me a car? What sort of crazy man is he? But you are not I wouldn't a stranger, buy him a coffee. You are, you, are, you are one of the stars of this channel, you know? What do you mean, one of? You name me another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. You know what I mean? Don't be lowering the bar. There's only I one. No, <laughs> Mina Razuki. She's not on this channel. Hey, oh, and, uh, yeah, she's you. a favourite of everyone's. Um, anyway, listen, uh, let's get to best bets. Stinch. Gladback Freiburg over 2.75 at minus 120. Yellow from Stinch. Frankfurt Union over 2.25 at minus 115. And, and as he says, it's over three goals is the uh, average in Bundesliga. And there you're getting 2.25. Bayern and Harry Kane, anytime goal scorer, minus 125. My parlays, Leipzig minus 113 here. Bayern minus 113 here. A massive plus 160. I know you're all loving that. Kern double chance at plus 100. Unless you go to... Uh, Bank of Alex, you get plus 140. Uh, Gladbach Freiburg over 2.75 at minus 120. Leipzig half time, full time, plus 105. Stuttgart half time, full time, minus 125. Um, and Sliverin has just come in with another question. Thoughts on Verda versus Wolfs? Uh, again, nothing from me. From you, Alex? Nothing from me. Stinch. Corners, corners. Don't bet on England Under. to win the Euros. <laughs> yeah, get you on France. Get on France, but we did at 11 to 2. Okay, from everyone at BetUS, enjoy your Easter weekend. There's plenty of sport going on. Remember, we've got MLB, we've got NCAA March Madness going completely crazy here. Uh, come on, Houston. Come on, Tennessee. They're my two futures. Um, really, really got my fingers crossed. Let's have a flash after you said you'll buy one a slice of pizza. Oh, my God. Yeah, listen, I lie. <laughs> Don't worry about that. For everyone at BetUS, may all your bets be winners. See you soon, Alex. See you soon, Stinch. Um, remember, Stinch, your clocks go forward in the in Europe this weekend. On Sunday. So, yes. yeah, exactly. So please make sure that you turn up on time uh, next week. All right? From everyone at BetUS, you take care. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, hit the like, subscribe, and ring the bell, and we will notify you, and you'll never miss a show again. For all of the sports content here at BetUS, then type in betustv.com. Let's cash together.